Oh, my goodness. Oh, God. There's another <clears throat> one. Now it's obvious, I think, that uh, th there's a second plane just crashed into the World Trade Center. I think we have a terrorist attack of proportions that we cannot begin to imagine. Fourteen years ago today, America endured one of the darkest chapters in our nation's history, an attack in New York City on the Twin Towers and outside Washington at the Pentagon, which resulted in the deaths of almost 3,000 people. Many victims and first responders still deal with the aftermath of that attack. Meantime, Al-Qaeda renews its call for terror in its latest magazine, they call for lone wolf attacks and assassination of American billionaires. For more on this troubling story, we welcome in from Newsmax Washington, counterterrorism expert Ann Speckhard, and is the author of the book, Bride of Isis, One Young Woman's Path in Homegrown Terrorism. And joining us via Skype from New York, former INS officer Michael Cutler, who testified before the 9-11 Commission. We welcome both of you to Newsmax Prime. Thank you for having us. Michael, first to you, Al-Qaeda said in its magazine they're seeking to recruit specifically African Americans saying they're, quote, against the oppression and injustices directed towards you, close quote. What is Al-Qaeda up to? Well, look, they're trying to get into the minds and hearts of people who perceive themselves as being disenfranchised. I, I mean, look what they're trying to do. Get people in a, in a foreign country to kill their neighbors, kill their fellow citizens. Who better to go after than those people who think they have a, a, a gripe and perhaps um, find legitimacy in, in committing acts of violence within their home country? And we've seen these terror groups become very savvy in terms of social media. I know you wrote the book about a young woman being lured into this. Was she attracted via social media? Yes, she was. She was uh, seduced into ISIS over the Internet. She had a lover that was a Tunisian uh, fighter in ISIS, and he proposed marriage to her. She also downloaded Anwar al-Awlaki. He's uh, someone that talk, has talked to Americans and Europeans into the belief that as a Muslim, their duty, and this is completely false, uh, their duty is to fight jihad, either to go to the battlefield or to bring the battlefield to them and attack at home. So Shannon Connolly downloaded jihadi manuals, guerrilla manuals from Al-Qaeda, and settled on doing a VIP attack inside Denver. Then she changed her mind when she fell in love with a Tunisian and decided to marry him and go to Syria. Thankfully, she let her father in on it, and he saw her one-way ticket. I call it the one-way ticket to hell. And uh, he called the FBI, and she was stopped at the airport. She's sitting in prison now. Well, it is good to know that there was a safe ending for America in that story, Anne. But, Michael, there are chapters that have yet to be written. Specifically, we made reference to the latest Al-Qaeda magazine calling for attacks against uh, American businessmen and billionaires. How seriously should those potential targets take that? I think they should take it seriously. I think we should all be taking it seriously. You know, the president is now calling for the admission of thousands of refugees. You know, I'm sympathetic to the plight of refugees. My grandmother, for whom I was named, was killed in the Holocaust. We're Jewish. But the point is that we don't even know who we are admitting. There is no way to properly vet these folks. Back in November of last year, Newsweek did a report on how our military is finding it virtually impossible to properly vet uh, recruits to help our military fight the war overseas. How in the world do we then vet people in our country uh, on in, in terms of the numbers that we have? And if you look at the 9-11 Commission report, um, it's a daunting task to be able to sort through all of this because this was the key way for the terrorists to come here. Not so much running the borders, but coming through international airports, committing visa fraud, immigration fraud. I did a hearing about it four and a half years before 9-11. And by the way, I just wrote an article for the social contract that went into great detail about the nexus between immigration failures and the threat of terrorism. And we have chronicled that before. And for lack of a Absolutely. better term, I guess we need to talk about what I'd call collective psychology. In the wake of 9-11, we were a nation united. Now, nearly a decade and a half later, we seem to be a nation divided. Why is that psychologically? 45 seconds. 
I think it has something to do with that uh, we're all listening to different news and taking in different realities. I mean, back when I was a child, there was Walter Cronkite, and we were all listening to the same news and had the same reality. But that's not the case anymore. And of course, during times of crisis, people do get more attachment oriented and do come together. But, you know, a diversity of opinion is not a bad thing. And, and I do have to say that we haven't seen refugees, it's very rare that they have um, been arrested on terrorism charges. There are some, no, I, I have to, but it's I have very to rare. It's if you look, we, if you look here's what we will have community. to, we will bring you both back in the days ahead to have this very important discussion. For now, you we both have our we thanks. We'll have that discussion. Uh, you hear a diversity of opinion. What's your opinion? We'd love to hear from you. Write us at NewsmaxTV.com slash comments. There's more right after this.